Welcome to the HP Online Teaching Assistant, an initiative of HP Education. Today we will explain how to use Jamboard, Google's digital whiteboard for class collaboration. Today we are going to take a short tour of the collaborative whiteboard, Jamboard. We'll look at the basic features and some demonstrations of how it is used. These are the objectives for today. To explore the app, to know its basic functions, to create activities with Jamboard, to embed Jamboard in Google Classroom. Let's get started. What is Jamboard? It's a Google Online Collaborative Whiteboard in our G Suite, which means I can use it with several people at once and the changes are seen in real time. Who can use this app? Any teacher who has a G Suite account or even anyone who has a Gmail account. Is it hard to use? The truth is, it's a very intuitive application, super simple. You just need to know a few things and you'll be ready to use it without a problem. How do we access it? From your Gmail account by clicking on the nine dots at the top right, or by entering the link you see here. Here, I have my Chrome browser open and I already signed in with my Google account. So I just have to click on the nine dots up here and look for the Jamboard app. Click on it and I'm in. The first thing that appears to us are all the Jamboards that we have. This includes the ones we have created and the ones that have been shared to us by others. Here, for example, I made one for animals and also made another to send as homework to students. Because the Jamboard can be incorporated in our Google Classroom, we could send a board to each student, and here it would show the boards of all the children. We will look at this in a while. If we had a lot of Jamboards, we could use the search engine up here. All we would have to do is write the name here and press Enter key. This isn't my case since I have just a few and can be easily seen. It's also good to be able to identify whether these jams are ours or someone else's. This button is to refresh the page. This is to sort the jam boards based on last time opened, last modified by me, and so on. That's very useful because sometimes we can't find things and these options can facilitate the search. There is also the option to display the Jamboards in rows, where the slides of what's in each Jamboard appears, or the grid view. And this button is to open a jam with a code. Now let's create a new jam. Just click on the plus symbol down here, and you will see a completely blank digital board. This will be our canvas that has just one slide. You can see it here at the top. The first thing I'm going to do is share it with someone. You can also edit it with me. To do this, I have to go to the sharing option and I have two ways to share it. On the one hand, I can copy the link to share, but before I can choose if this jam can only be opened by people inside my organization or if I want anyone with the link can open it. I also can define the role for them, viewers, or if I want them as editors. And this is the link I'll copy and share. On the other hand, I can directly enter the names here or the group name. This is important. If you want to share it with the students, if you unmark this option here, it prevents whoever you share it with to share it with others. Because sometimes you just want them to work individually and the problem is that a student sends the board to others and the situation becomes complex. So this option prevents this from happening. Now that everything is set, I click send and that's all. Our board right now is currently blank and the tools we need to start using our Jamboard are here in the left margin. You see that my colleague has already joined, so if she does something on the board, we will see it. Let's start with the tools. Pen. From left to right, we have pen, marker, highlighter, and brush. That is to say, from more permanent to less permanent. Let's use, for example, the pen in black. This is how it looks. Now let's use the marker in blue. To see the different strokes, it's a little thicker. Let's now look at the highlighter. This one does well if we want to highlight a text. Now, the brush. 
This is the one with the least force. You see, it's clearer. So depending on the need you have, here you have four types of strokes. Then here is the eraser. If you go pass over something, you erase it. Very easy. You just have to click, or if you have a computer with a stylus pen options, just pass over it. Then there is the select option. Now, I can't select anything because I don't have anything to select. These are sticky notes. We can edit, duplicate, resize, or move. I've put on a yellow one. Now I'll put on a green one, for example, and click Save. Now I have two post-its. Now I can use the Select button. I can take the note and move it, make it bigger, rotate it, and in the three dots I can edit, duplicate, delete it, or change the order of the note. Let's continue with Add Image. Here we have several options. You can upload it from your computer, from your Google Drive, Google Photos, or do an image search in Google. For example, I can type world map in black and white, and we'll get all the Google images there are from which we can select the one we like. And we click on select. We have it on our board. So here, you as a teacher or a student can start drawing. For example, if I tell my colleague to put a check on where is Australia, please mark it. You see here, it appears as marked. I can select the laser option in case she's wrong in showing where it is. Just hold down the mouse and point where I want. This is just to make a temporary mark. I can also add shapes with this option. Let's insert a circle. And you can change the border and fill the color of the figure. And with this option, I can add text to my board. And up here, I have my text options, size, color, and alignment. What else does Jamboard have? The backgrounds. That is, we have backgrounds that we can choose from. The one I have is white, but I can put dots on it. This is super cool, for example, for younger children, because you can create a path for the kids to write the letter. It is usually said that computers can't be used to teach kids to write, but actually, yes. You see, the dotted lines are a very, very good option for this. So, if you don't visualize it well, we can go to the magnifying glass and expand it. Then our stroke will be much better. Okay, I'm going to create a mini lesson about animals. First, I click on Clear Frame. You see, everything has disappeared, so I can start from zero. I want a solid color for my background. I like the blue one. Now I'm going to name my jam. Let's type animals, click OK. Now I'm going to place a sticky note with the same title as the lesson, animals. Save, and I'll place it up here as a heading. So what else can we do? We can classify them as vertebrates or invertebrates. For example, I'll place another sticky note that says invertebrates. I save it and place it here. And if I press the keys Control plus C and Control plus V, I can duplicate it and change the name by double clicking on the note and writing vertebrates and save. So now we can start making a concept map in which my colleague will match the images of animals that I'm going to include. I can go to Add Image and look for a cow. So I type cow. Select this one, then look for a snake. Now a spider. Select this one. And worms. Select this one.
I'm going to organize the images down here while my colleague uses the pen to link them. As you can see, it is quite integrated for one to work collaboratively while someone else is adding photos or doing something else. You see the changes made in real time. Now imagine that you want to place your school logo on your board. You can search for it in your browser, for example. I'll type YouTube logo. I want this one. Right-click on it. Copy image. Then return to my Jamboard and paste it with Control plus V command. I have the Grupo AE logo on my computer, so I go to Add Image, Upload, and drag the logo here. So now, I have my corporate image inside my canvas. This is quite good, for example, if you have created content and you want to download it because it has your personal brand. Speaking of downloading, if you click the three dots for more actions, it gives you the option to Save Frame as Image. That is to say, that from the board we've made, you can take an image or download it as a PDF. I'll save it as a PDF because I want to then pass it on to the students. Okay, now imagine that you also wish to create an activity in which you want the child to draw on something. You can simply create a new Jamboard for this activity. I'm going to go to the Jamboard that I had previously created, Class Activity. Here I have two slides, but I want to put this one first. Here, I paste an image of Dory and a sticky note with a brief intro into my activity. So I click on the slides, and here I have the option to create new slides by clicking on the plus symbol, or from the three dots, I can duplicate or delete the frame. But what I want now is to move this one. I just have to drag it to place it first. Now let's create a sticky note saying, point out Dory's parts, and save it. This will be the activity. I can change the background, make the note bigger, and this is the image the kids can use to help Dory identify her parts. Now, where are the kids going to do the exercise? In their Google Classroom. To do this, we open Classroom and send it as homework. Remember that everything we do in Jamboard is saved on our Google Drive. So now, I open my Google Classroom, go to my Biology class, click on Classwork, and click on Create Assignment, which I will call Parts of a Fish. You can type the instructions here that would be help Dory to remember the names of her body parts so that she can go to the doctor and tell where it hurts. And finally, click on Add from Google Drive. Select the Jamboard we recently edited, which is this one. Click on Insert. Then, in this part here, you click Make a copy for each student. We can give a date and time of delivery if we want to. For example, for tomorrow. The time is optional, and the homework is created by clicking Assign. So, as you've seen, we've already created a Jamboard from scratch, we've shared it, we've created a PDF from the Jam, and we've created an exercise for the kids. That would be the basics you need to know to start working on your Jamboard. Thank you for watching this video, offered by HP Online Teaching Assistant, an initiative of HP Education.